Good morning everybody. Today is Friday, it's the 2nd of October and I hope this blog finds you happy and healthy. This blog is directed really towards the boys and girls in St. Peter's National School. But in actual fact, it's for everybody and anybody. Anybody who comes across this chat, this blog, on YouTube or on Facebook. I hope it will mean something to each and every one of you in the days to come. It is the 2nd of October, as I said, and really we're in peak harvest season in church times. And normally churches the length and breadth of the country and around the world celebrate harvest at this time. But this year it's just a little bit different. So today I just thought I'd explain one or two terms that are related to harvest, but in a kind of roundabout way. If I was to use the word to glean, what would you understand by that? You see, our modern interpretation of that word is to get knowledge, to obtain, often with difficulty. So if you glean something, it's you found out about something, you understand something. And that's our modern take on it. But in actual fact, to glean is a much older world word than that. It goes right back to the earliest of times. In the Old Testament, the Hebrew Bible, the books Deuteronomy and Leviticus mandated farmers back then, thousands of years ago, that they wouldn't harvest the corners of their fields. If a field was particularly difficult to harvest, that they would leave that. And that any of the corn that fell after the harvesting would be left there. You see, the thing was that 2,000 years ago, 3,000 years ago, there was no Department of Social Welfare. There was no dole. There was no money for anybody. You either earned it or you didn't have it. It's as simple as that. But Hebrew law mandated farmers to leave the grain behind that had fallen, that they couldn't get, and that this was to be there solely for the purpose of widows, orphans and strangers. And communities built themselves around this. Those who were the unfortunate in society back then knew that come harvest time, that they would be in the fields and they would be gathering what was left after the harvesters. Now, back then, they didn't have combines. Everything was done by hand. But they would have had backbreaking work on the ground, picking up each grain, grain by grain. Can you just imagine how tiring that that would actually make you? And this was what they had to trade or to eat because they had no other means to actually make money. It was for widows, for orphans, and for the stranger. Really, when you think about it, harvest, yes, is about giving thanks to God. But it's also about looking after one another, making sure that one another's needs are met. That's what the Hebrew Bibles were telling them three and a half thousand years ago. It's what it tells us today too, to look after one another. That just because we might have plenty doesn't mean that everybody does. Just because we have loads of food in our refrigerators and freezers and on the kitchen table doesn't mean that everybody lives like that. The Hebrews understood that and they understood that the unfortunates in society who had no other means needed to be looked after. And that gave them the right to go through the fields and pick up all the gleanings, all the corn that was left over after harvest. In 2020, how do we actually do that? Yes, we do look after one another. And yes, we do have a state that gives us benefits and health benefits and education benefits as well. 
But that doesn't mean that we don't have the responsibility to look after one another and to check in that one another is okay. That begins in the schoolyard. That continues all the way through life with neighbours, with friends, with family, and also with people that we don't know or might never know. This harvest time is very special. It's very different. But you know what? It is a time that we can actually get back and start thinking about others around us and how they are. And do they have enough? God bless you. Take care and keep well. Bye.